Welcome to Show and Bar Labs. Finding Our Path, a documentary on the Schoenbar totem pole. When we hear in Ketchikan, we see the Clinket, we see the Haida, we see the Simshian. Um, those are three different distinct uh, native nations. They all have different languages. Um, and that's the big part about it, is that these three different nations have three different languages. From that, they communicate with other nations, such as the Kwakutl, you have the Coast Salish uh, over in British Columbia and down into Washington State. And so all of these folks kind of exist together. What connects them is the art. Anyone that walks around a catch can can see the art that the community has created. Totem poles have a rich history on Revilla Gigedo Island, stretching back for ages. Well, there are as many reasons as a totem pole can be carved as there are totem poles. Uh, we have a, a display here behind me with five different totem poles to give five different reasons for totem poles. Um, certainly not all of them, but just to kind of give you an idea. We have this pole right here in the front is one of the most commonly known is what we call a story pole. And this pole is identified as a Haida story pole from the village of Old Kassan. Now, very basically, the story was to display morals to the young children. So totems can be used to project morals or tell a story. Now usually you're not supposed to be able to you know, just read a totem pole by looking at it. And certainly you can't identify whose family this is, but you can identify that this family wears these animals for their crest. And so the family that would have lived in this village or within the house in which this pole would have resided outside would have had an eagle, frog, beaver, or any combination of those three. Now potlatches are very important around here. It is a demonstration of wealth and of status, but it's not the, the westernized wealth that you see today where it's, I have all of this for me and I'm gonna show it off. It's no, I have all of this for me and I'm gonna share it with all of you. At a potlatch, the host is expected to completely care for their guests and not just care for them and provide room and board and entertainment, but also to gift them, to gift them with almost everything that they own. And so on this poll, we're seeing five rings representing five different times that this family had given away pretty much everything that they owned to their guests. There are as many reasons for a totem pole as there are poles. Symbols help show a story or message of why a pole was created. Symbols can show a story of a powerful chief. Symbols can represent characteristics such as strength or wisdom. Symbols can be a warning or a show of physical strength. Totem poles can also show a family crest and are considered to be contracts or legal documents. Totem poles are also created for a death in the family which are known as mortuary poles. Schoenbar Middle School used to have a totem, but was taken down in the remodel of the school in 2005. It still remains a mystery who carved it and when it was raised. After it was taken down and put in the maintenance shed, the old totem has been returned to nature following native custom. And I thought it was a shame that our pole was gone. And so I started trying to uh, get collaborations with other teachers to write grants never seemed to be the right time. Um, teachers uh, retired or left in the middle of us writing the grant process. So it's been a long time in coming. I've been supportive of the project for a long time and things just kind of fell together last year. It was really awesome. Uh, and we started looking at various carvers and I talked around to some of the master carvers and Kelly's name was brought up kind of light and Kelly, as I know, <clears throat> was brought up several times. And we talked, we sat down um, and talked about it. And he had a passion, a passion for uh, passing on the traditions, for teaching children and making this part of a community. Yes, my, my name's uh, Kenneth White, uh, for tax purposes. <laughs> <laughs> but now, Klinka's uh, uh, name is uh, Yashquan and also Tachuklika. Uh, which means hungry white man. I've been uh, at this carving for about seven years. Um, I got bored one day, picked up a tool, started whacking away at some wood. 
I would always bring my artwork to the master carvers, they'd critique me, and then I'd just continue that process over and over. So. Symbols selected to be on the Pathfinder pool were chosen by Northwest Coast art students. Anyone of any culture is invited to come in here and carve during those times if they're available. To spread the message of carving the Pathfinder pole, students at Schoenbar Middle School created several public service announcements. 4.30. Every third Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Come carve with us on December 17th. Mrs. Williams talked to elders as well as cultural leaders about the traditional procedures that needed to be followed so that raising of the tonum followed native guidelines. Pathfinder Pole Potlatch started with the Blessing Song performed by Gloria Burns, Michelle Eekman, and Gianna Willard Flannery, representing Haida culture. This chant was meant to cleanse the earth, the air, and the people. and local community members collaborating and honoring our great strength, diversity, and finding our way. Again, young people and the ones that have taken part with this, when the poll comes up, you look at it with a lot of pride that I had something to do with it. I wanted to take part in something that was going to be looked at every day from visitors, from new people coming into town, they're going to look at that. And they're going to say, that's very incredible. That is really nice work. And this poll is about community. And we invited the community in, and we had people come. And we had kids of all ages and all abilities working on this, from little ones to big ones to adults to former students here. It is a community poll. It brings us together. In order to be involved with this as well, the reason for that is because uh, not a lot of people, I guess you could see, are familiar with the Northwest Coast culture or the complexities of it. Um, with any type of people, if you have an abundance of food and you're able to preserve this food, you're going to have an abundance of culture, abundance of language. And, uh, so we have a unique weaving styles, carving language is super complex. So just to try to explain a little bit about it or to tell the people about it, totem poles is a way to do that and it just world world renowned. So <laughs> Keep this way. There we go. Hold it, hold it. <laughs> this here is called the Pathfinder Totem Pool. Last year, I came in with these students and I told them the symbolism of the various animals and how they are related to the Northwest Coast culture. Some symbolism such as the bear would represent you have the killer whale. We put the killer whale up there to represent people who would be considered role models, people you would follow, your parents, your teachers, your elders. Speaking right below the killer well is the sun. The sun for your various seasons. Summer is probably one of the biggest seasons everyone here is looking forward to. 
We chose the wolf. The reason we chose the wolf was because this was the game. You have to work with one another. You have to talk in order to ensure your survival. It's not about just one. It's about all of us. One is the octopus. Right there. You can see the eight tentacles and the head of the octopus. So this here would be your support. This will be your luck. Your spiritual healing. The three figures here on the bottom, they're to represent the Clinkets, the Haidas, and the Simshians. Those of the Northwest Coast here in Southeast Alaska. And here on the sides, you have some fish or salmon. Salmon, the reason I chose was because they have to persevere in order to get to their spawning grounds. They have to start at the very bottom of the creek and they have to work really hard up the streams. It's kind of like you showed her here today. You are working against the tides and the waters in order to get to your destination. Nothing can ever just be given to you because you won't appreciate it like you would unless you work really hard for it. Here on the box drum, you would store your most prized possessions inside a Bentwood box. And this is a Bentwood box imitation. So you had the three human figures that were supposed to be in the box here. And on the front design of the box, we did an eagle raven design, a lovebird design. A lovebird design was created to represent those of non-native descent. It is tradition for carvers to dance around a raised totem. This included members of the community that took part in the carving of the whole. The ceremony ended with a grand exit. This was meant to signify all of the native tribes leaving together as one mind. A traditional potlatch followed the grand exit. This was the part of the ceremony where gifts were given to guests of the celebration. Totem pole at Schoenbar and it was remodeled to inspire the community to come together and create a symbol to be looked at for generations to come. There are as many stories as there are totem poles. The story of the Pathfinder pole is not the story of one, but the story of what the community made together.